If you've been wanting to connect your DualShock 4 controller to your PlayStation Vita so that you can play your Vita wirelessly on your big screen TV, this is the video for you. I'm going to teach you how to connect your PlayStation 4's DualShock controller to your modded PlayStation Vita. You'll learn how to set your PlayStation 4 DualShock controller into Bluetooth pairing mode, and exactly what it takes to get your PlayStation 4 controller up and running on your Vita. Power up your beloved handheld because we're starting now. Click the subscribe button and ring the bell to become part of the conversation. And check the video description for the links featured in the video and the latest show notes and updates. The first step in the process is to download Auto Plugin 2 for your Vita. It's hosted on the GitHub and I have it linked for you in the description below. Scroll down on the downloads page to the assets section and download the file labeled Auto Plugin 2.vpk. From your Vita's live area, launch Vita Shell by tapping on the bubble in the live area or selecting it with X then tap on Start or select with X. Before you connect your device, if you're using SD to Vita, press the Start button, and in the list of choices, come down to Memory Card and change this to SD to Vita. It's set to Memory Card by default, just press the X button to cycle through the choices. Once you have this set up like you want, press the Circle button to go back, then press the Select button to connect your device via FTP or USB to your PC. With your Vita connected to your PC, Copy the auto plugin 2vpk file to your storage. If you're going to drag and drop this file, this is very important. Don't drag and drop the file into any of the folders and this mistake is very easy to make. Instead, copy it off to the right so that you don't copy it into any of the folders and you copy it directly to the root of your storage. Just like this. Once you have the file copied over, you can close out any instances of File Explorer in Windows and transition back over to your Vita for the remainder of this process. Press the select button on your Vita to disconnect from your computer. From the list of drives, use the D-pad to navigate down to UX0 and select UX0 with the X button. In the list of folders and files, use the D-pad to scroll all the way down to the bottom of the list. You'll find autoplugin2.vpk there. Use the D-pad to move the highlight up to autoplugin2.vpk and select it with the X button. Select yes with X. And when the permissions prompt appears, select yes with the X button to install Auto Plugin 2. Once the installation process is complete, you no longer need the VPK file. Might as well save the space on your storage. With it still highlighted, press the triangle button for the side menu. Use the D-pad to scroll down to delete. Select delete with the X button. And at the confirmation prompt, select yes to delete the VPK file. Now you're done with Vita Shell. Press the PlayStation button on your Vita, then swipe from the right corner down or press and hold circle to go back to the live area. Now you'll see a new Auto Plugin 2 bubble dancing on the live area. Use the D-pad to highlight it, then select it with X or just tap on the bubble, then tap on Start or select it with X to launch Auto Plugin 2 for the first time. The first time you launch it, it has to do some basic setup, then you'll be at the main menu for Auto Plugin 2. From the main menu, select Vita Plugins with the X button. Then in the submenu, select Install Plugins with the X button. From the list of plugins, use the D-pad to scroll down to the list until you see one that's called DS for Vita by Zerpy. Use the X button to select this plugin and install it to your PlayStation Vita. You need to restart your Vita for this plugin to take effect. Press the Start button, and at the confirmation prompt, select X for OK to restart your Vita. When your Vita restarts, launch settings from the live area by tapping on the bubble or selecting with X, then tap on Start or select it with X to go into Settings. We'll need to make sure that Bluetooth is turned on inside your settings. To do this, scroll down to Devices and select it with the X button. Then in the Devices submenu, scroll down to Bluetooth Devices and select it with the X button. Then make sure the Bluetooth feature checkbox is checked. We'll need to put your DualShock 4 controller into Bluetooth pairing mode. Here's how that's done. To pair your PlayStation 4's DualShock controller, press and hold both the PlayStation button and the Share button together for several seconds. Once it's in pairing mode, you'll see a fast flashing light on the top of the controller. In a few moments within your settings application, you'll see a new listing for wireless controller. Select it with the X button to continue. When you're prompted to pair the device, use the D-pad to slide over to OK and select it with X or just tap on OK. And you're going to get an error message. Don't worry about it. Just select OK to continue. And when you're taken back to the Bluetooth settings menu, you'll find out that you have control of the menu directly from the PS4 controller. 
And just to confirm this, you can exit out of settings and immediately go right back into the settings application with X or tap on it and then tap on start or select it with X. Go right back into devices, go down to Bluetooth devices and select it again. And this time, instead of saying wireless controller, it will officially say DualShock 4 wireless controller. And if you find that you have any connectivity issues, just uncheck the Bluetooth box in the top right corner and recheck it to reactivate the Bluetooth connection. Now that you have a DualShock 4 controller connected to your Vita, check out this video shown on screen and linked in the pinned comment and description below for great ways to use it.